I still stand on my proposition that if the testimony of Mr. Stevens is concluded and Senator McCarthy is called next, that it will greatly shorten the hearing. My good friend, Mr. Jenkins, does not share my optimism. Since he does not share my optimism, I have been forced to say that I think the American people will demand and should have the long, hard, furrow plow. I began in this case by saying I wanted all the facts presented. Consideration over the night has led me more firmly than ever to feel that must be done no matter how much time is required. do. Uh, as far as I am concerned, I am still willing to abide by the agreement which we made last night. If Mr. Welch uh, wants to welch on that, that's perfectly all right. I think that this, I think something has been accomplished, Mr. Chairman. Even though we do continue for weeks and months with this hearing, I think something has been accomplished. It now appears very clear who wants to prolong the hearings who wants to drag them out? Now we observe that we are facing uh, much difficulty uh, because of the threat of a prolonged hearing at a time when the officials in the Department of the Army and the members of this subcommittee have far more important business to transact. I think that it is the overwhelming sentiment of the American people that everything possible should be done to terminate these hearings just as quickly as possible. There, were great, there was a great deal of discussion, but the statement that the committee gave serious consideration to limiting these hearings the only two principals, uh, Secretary Stevens and Senator McCarthy, does not apply to all of the committee. I stated in, at that time in the executive session that in my judgment, all principals to this controversy should be heard, should be required to take the witness stand and testify under oath because these charges are serious. They're not just related to whether a private in the Army got some passes, was kept off a of KP, or whether he drank champagne in the Stork Club of New York, but the charges and the counter charges that have been made and are still before this committee strike at the integrity of the administration of the United States Army and also at the integrity of a standing committee of the United States Senate. And gentlemen, in my opinion, you just can't wipe these charges off and at the same time do our duty. Quote, there are still some witnesses under subpoena by the subcommittee, and they will be he heard later this week in New York in executive session. Mm -hmm. Following those hearings, it is our present plan to hold open hearings on the same subject probably in New York. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean closing the hearing. Would you hand up me? Well, let's, let's, let's see now. What does this mean when you say I believe... Read the whole memorandum in context. Wait, it's, it's, it's been read, Mr. Adams. Let's, let's keep our tempers. Uh, I believe, quote, I believe, and, and let, let's make this clear, Mr. Adams, I am not accusing you of any uh, wrong intent. I think, just let oh, me finish, don't, don't, inter don't interrupt, please don't. Just, just please don't interrupt until I finish. You, you're uh, not accusing me of anything? Wait just a minute. Mr. Chairman, 
May I finish my point of order, Mr. Chairman? <coughs> Council was stated. <coughs> Mr. Adams has successfully gotten in, his, gotten in his statement that nowhere in that document does he request the cessation of Senator McCarthy's work with respect to Fort Monmouth. Senator McCarthy has successfully gotten in his contradiction of that statement. The document speaks for itself. It has been heard by all present and by all listening. It is the prerogative of this committee and of this committee alone to interpret that document and, and determine whether or not Mr. Adams' theory is correct or Senator McCarthy's theory is correct. that counsel of all parties, led by Mr. Jenkins, are authorized to continue exploring ways and means of expediting and shortening the present proceedings and to make a report to the subcommittee at the earliest possible moment. Well, then there was specific discussion of the suggestion that McCarthy follow Stevens and cut it off after that. That was mentioned in connection with the possibility of finding some means as a consequence of these consultations whereby we might reduce the number of witnesses and perhaps reduce the number of charges and countercharges. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if Mr. Welch is going to say there's not a copy of this in the Army files, he should be sworn because that statement is untrue as far as I know. There I did not exact... say that, Senator. I said that this purported copy did not come from the Army files, and you know I'm quite right, sir, and I have an absorbing curiosity to know how in the dickens you got hold of it. I'll I will... I don't intend to inquire about the content if the chair feels we should not do that. I'd like to have him read the letter, tell us whether or not uh, that is a duplicate of what he has in his file. Uh, if he can't tell us that today, then he can examine the file and tell us, and tell us whether or not there, this is just one of a sequence of letters from the FBI complaining about the bad security setup of the Sigma Corps laboratories and giving information on certain individuals. I did, I did Mr. Mr. Jenkins. You read the letter aloud to yourself. Well, not aloud, just to himself. Chair holds he can do that without disclosing its contents. If it meets with the approval of the chair, I would prefer not to even read the letter until I have Mr. Hoover's personal uh, permission to do so. Mr. Hoover at that time informed me that they had not found such a letter. He did have another letter of the same date. In order to be perfectly sure that uh, they had obtained the correct letter, I returned to the Senate office building and obtained uh, from Roy Cohen in Senator McCarthy's office the letter which I now have in my hand and which was the one produced yesterday by Senator McCarthy. I took that letter to Mr. Hoover, and at that time, he compared this letter with the letter in his possession of the same date. And I can now report to you that Mr. Hoover advised me that this letter is not... Identify, identify the letter when this you say is, this letter. This is the letter uh, produced yesterday by Senator McCarthy. This is not a carbon copy or a copy of any communication 
prepared or sent by the FBI to General Bowling on January 26, 1951, or any other date. When did you start to become unhappy about the agreement you made? I was unhappy about it right from its inception. Mm -hmm. uh, you were unhappy when you stood there smiling, shaking my hand while the photographers were taking their picture? Unhappy. Very. <laughs> It's rather important, Mr. Secretary, to know how come on this particular night there apparently was conceived the idea for this smear campaign against my staff. I'd I like to know who originated, who talked to whom. I, if it was originated then, which I, or, or any other time, which I very much doubt, I have no knowledge of it. I had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. did, did you say you had nothing to do with it? Absolutely nothing to do with it. One of the main issues is a matter of state control versus federal control of issues like civil rights. I believe in the states having the opportunity and the power to control uh, this particular issue and most of the other issues that are involved in this campaign. Senator Sparkman, what single issue in this campaign do you believe will elect you a re-elect you? As this election nears the end, the campaign nears the end, I feel quite confident as to the result. I've campaigned all over the state. I have reminded the people of my record. I'm running on that record, and I feel confident that on election day, the people are going to approve of that record and return me to the Senate to continue to represent them just as I have been doing in the past. It's Because I want to. Yeah. I yeah. Were there any Russian fighters in the Korean War? Yes, they, fight, they fought in the Korean War. Wait a minute. 
explained to a Russian for Yes, a Russian pilot. No, sir. Uh, you're going to school in the United States. Do you hope to stay in the United States? Yes, I hope. 